Hey everybody, and thanks for clicking on this video and checking out my YouTube channel that talks to movies with me. With How to Train Your Dragon 3 coming out, I thought it'd be fun to look back at the last two films in preparation for the release of the third installment. If you like these movies and you'd like to join in the conversation, I welcome you to do so down in the comment section below. Let's get a conversation going. And with all that out of the way, let's talk about How to Train Your Dragon. So How to Train Your Dragon is a 2010 DreamWorks animated film based on a book of the same name. It tells the story of a young boy named Hiccup, a Viking who lives on a small Viking village named Burke where the Vikings are at war with another species, dragons. When Hiccup befriends a dragon known as a Night Fury, he hopes to prove to his village and its chief, who happens to be Hiccup's dad, that dragons are not the monsters they have been made out to be. So first I want to talk about the world building of this movie, because I think it's great. The movie does a good job of fleshing out this village of Berg. The village of Berg feels like a very fleshed out society and group of people, and the rules and the expectations of the Vikings feel very clear and understood. And the thought and detail that goes into the dragons in this world is extraordinary. The dragon designs in this have central features to them, but each dragon still has a very different and distinctive look to it. Not only that, but the movie takes the extra step they give each species of dragons its own name, skills, and abilities and lays it out for you, which really expands on the lore and mythology and makes it feel so much deeper and it feels more real and it helps to really invest me in this world, bring me out of mine, and just allows me to escape into this world on the screen that they've laid out for me. And the character of Hiccup is really good too. The movie uses a lot of tropes and qualities that make for a good sympathetic protagonist. He's outcasted and mocked by his peers, alienated by society, and seen as a weakling and inferior to everyone around him. But those tropes and qualities work well in other movies and for other characters. There's just something about the protagonist who's beaten down by life and mocked by everyone around him that, that makes him so easy to get behind and root for. And it's no exception here. And I really like the way that Toothless and Hiccup make their connection. There really isn't much words said between the two of them, but through their actions, they give little bits of trust and loyalty to each other and then slowly given more and more. And by building their relationship on trust and loyalty makes the developing relationship and the way that it grows feel much more gradual and natural. And Toothless is just adorable, not only in his design with the big eyes and the cat-like face, but the creators give him a lot of pet-like qualities, as well as all the other dragons they give pet-like qualities to. And by giving them pet-like qualities, pet owners like myself are able to project our pets onto them. And they're just animals that are so easy to fall in love with. There's also some great animation in this movie with some breathtaking shots. And the flight scenes look incredible. The flight scenes are created and directed with so much atmosphere and speed that really helps give the effect of flying and soaring through the air. At one point, Toothless dove down and I felt like I was going down on a roller coaster ride. Like I had that motion feeling and I was just sitting on my couch. And some of these shots could be paintings. They just look so gorgeous and beautiful. And the color schemes, shadowing, lighting, and backgrounds are just so beautiful and gorgeous looking. They're just so appealing to the eye. This movie looks so good. And within that beautiful looking movie, there's a sweet little story about a boy and his pet. It's kind of standard. It follows the same kind of tropes and plot lines that other movies with the boy and his pet. Like hiding the animal, for example, and keeping it a secret from his parents. But they do it in this fantasy world of Vikings and dragons. That just adds a lot to it. And the war scenes between the Vikings and the dragons can actually give some really exciting and thrilling action to it. And the first How to Train a Dragon movie is just a really good movie. It's filled with fun characters, cute humor, and investing in fleshed out world, and an endearing relationship between a boy and his pet with Toothless and Hiccup. If you haven't seen this movie yet, there's a lot in it to enjoy, and I highly recommend that you check it out. Guys, thanks again for clicking on this video and checking out my channel. What do you think of How to Train Your Dragon? Do you like it, love it, hate it? Is it your favorite of the How to Train Your Dragon films so far? Comment down below, let me know what you think about this movie, and let's get a conversation going. I'm going to be back soon talking about How to Train Your Dragon 2. If you'd like to join me for that, I'd love for you to come back and talk about that movie with me. Once again, my name is Zachary Milne. Thanks for talking movies with me, and I hope you have yourself a great day.